When I was up here before, I spoke to some of the signs that support is building in the sector for an upturn. And one of those signs is that proven and experienced management teams are starting to are, are establishing the vehicles that they are going to use um, to ride to success in the next market. And First Mining Finance, which is our next company up to the podium, is a perfect example of that. This is a very experienced group of individuals who have come together with one goal, which is to take advantage of the incredibly low valuations in the mining space, and they want to put together a stable of assets that they can um, it, that they can leverage when the mining markets start to really move. Um, this merchant bank kind of model needs two things: it needs money and it needs expertise. And First Mining has both of those. So to tell you more about that, please welcome Pat Donnelly. Thanks, Gwen, and it's uh, very encouraging to see a, a really good turnout today, and uh, maybe that's another sign that uh, things are turning around. But hopefully that not quite yet, so we have an opportunity to go out and uh, acquire some assets. Um, I joined First, uh, First uh, Money Finance last January, and uh, my decision was pretty much predicated on, as, as Gwen and, and everyone else has stated, on the people involved, and specifically the opportunity to work with Keith Newmeyer. And uh, I don't know if I need to talk about Keith, but uh, you know, uh, when I spoke to Keith last fall, he was telling, you know, he, Keith founded First Quantum Minerals, and he also founded First Majestic Silver. And the, the commonality of those two companies and this new vehicle we're working on now is that the, both those companies were started in very severe bear markets for mining. And Keith has seen incredible valuations, and that's why we're coming, we've come together to go out and, and take advantage of the current uh, bear market and acquire some really quality assets. Typical legal notice, please take a look at that. And I will be making uh, uh, forward-looking statements in this slide here. So what are we doing? Um, it's a bit of a different model. Uh, we're not an explorer, we're not a developer, we're a mineral bank. And we're gonna go out and take advantage of probably some of the lowest valuations in over 20 years. Um, I've been doing this for, for over 20 years. I'm a geologist. Uh, I made it through the 90s, uh, and, and uh, I, I think this is worse than what we've seen in the 90s. This is worse than what we've seen in the Brex days. And because of that, there's opportunities out there. Um, there are projects out there. You can get a million ounces of quality gold in the ground for under, ten, with, but, but are owned by companies with market caps of, of, of less than $10 million who are in severe distress. Um, how are we, what are we going to do? We're going to go out, we're going to acquire these companies, and we're going to put them in our mineral bank. The exit strategy is we're going to hold these assets, and eventually these markets will turn around. They always do, and when they turn around, they turn around very quickly, and, and they turn around very strong. And we will hold on to these assets, and the exit strategy is simply to enter into agreements with third parties, where the third party would move the asset forward, and we would hold on to some sort of residual interest, either a royalty, a stream, minority interest, equity, or some combination of the above. Incredible experience in, uh, in this company. Uh, Keith is a chairman and founder. He's leading the story. Uh, I'm a geologist. I'm an ex uh, cell site analyst in Toronto. Our CEO we, uh, is very strong, Chris, Dr. Chris Osterman. We also have the support of First Majestic Silver. And I have access to all their people. We have a services agreement with them. And uh, so, you know, we're, we're not a bunch of slouches. We've done this before. And, and, and we have the horses to, to get this done. So our strategy is to go out and build one of the largest portfolios of mineral assets uh, in the world. We're focusing on, on North and South America. We like uh, most of Canada. We like uh, Mexico, obviously. We like uh, Arizona, Nevada. Uh, Argentina, I think, is getting better. We like Mexico, obviously. Uh, Peru, Chile. So it's going to be a Latin American focus. Again, taking advantage of our strengths working in North and South America. And First Money Finance is going to go out and acquire quality assets at historically low prices. And we've already looked at over 70 to 80 assets. Um, well, we've looked at over 1,000 uh, companies, and we've whittled it down to 70, 80 companies. And uh, right now, we have a list of five or six that we're ready to pull the trigger on. We've already pulled the trigger on one asset, uh, one company, and I'll talk a bit about that. 
and, ca and, we, and we'll be using our script, our, our shares, to, to acquire assets as opposed to paying cash. Cash will be used just for running the company. We only have three employees. It's myself, our CEO, and a VP of exploration. We're not going to drill. We're not going to explore. Um, all the cash is just going to be simply, you know, holding costs, <laughs> salaries, making acquisitions, that sort of thing. So I think this chart here, I mean, really tells it all, where we are and why there's incredible opportunities out there. Um, right now, like I said, we are in one of the worst bear markets uh, ever in the mining space. And again, that's creating just unprecedented opportunities. I think what's different now than in the 90s, you're seeing a lot of majors out there that have really stressed balance sheets and they're barely keeping their heads above water and majors right now are shedding assets, not acquiring assets. And in the, in the, in the, in the junior sector is just absolutely dismal. Uh, the market right now is very, very, um, uh, they're very acutely uh, aware of risk and, and worried about risk and just don't have the appetite to acquire juniors. And even juniors with quality assets and quality people are having a hard time getting traction in the markets out there. And that's exactly what we're going to take advantage of. So what are our criteria for acquisitions? Obviously, the quality asset, grade, metallurgy, expiration upside, mineability. We also look at political jurisdictions. There are certain areas we will not go into, even if it's got incredible assets. Infrastructure is obviously a big, uh, big issue. Roads, power, water. We do look at all those things. Land tenure, uh, troublesome governments, First Nations, ajitos, those sorts of things we, we take a really hard look at. Holding costs, obviously, are a major criteria. Taxes, assessment work all those other things. And then valuations. We're looking for really cheap assets. There's some really quality assets out there for, you know, under $10 an ounce. And we're looking for a minimum of a million ounces. Uh, in terms of commodities, we like gold, copper, lead zinc, uh, silver, uh, and, and nickel. Uh, Keith loves gold. I'm a copper bug. I can talk for hours about coppers. If you want to talk copper, you know, grab me. But, uh, you know, overall, I think the whole, whole overall metals uh, exchange traded metals eventually, very in, in the near term, are all, all going to be uh, subject to very significant supply shortages. Uh, shortages, and again, I think that bodes well for investors and it bodes well for us. So we've already pulled the trigger on a one acquisition, Coastal Gold. Um, they have an incredible asset called Hope Brook, which is in Newfoundland. It fits all the criteria I just went through. Uh, we're paying six and a half cents uh, per share of cod. And we're paying about $11 million. They have a mil uh, and, and, that tr and, and that transaction will, will close probably by the end of June or early July. And we have a lot more targets lined up. We're going to close this one, and we'll probably pull the trigger on another one very uh, quickly after that. So we're going to be aggressive. We're not monkeying around. You know, there's a lot of people saying they're going to be doing what we're doing, but we're the only ones that have actually gone out there and done it. And we're going to continue to do it. We're going to grow our base. We want to have 40, 50 assets into our, our mineral bank. And, you know, Hope Brook is a typical, a typical example of a really high quality asset. It's almost five grams. Most of the resource is actually indicated a little bit of inferred. Uh, it's got good metallurgy. It's got infrastructure. It's in Newfoundland. Um, so uh, a, a place that people want jobs, they want mining, and it's a perfect example. And it was the top of our list. It was held by Stan Barty Company. We originally approached them in uh, April. And they laughed at us. They said, no, we're, we're not interested. We already got this deal with another Stan Barty company. We're going to get married. We said, well, then we're, if you're not going to listen in the front door, we're coming in the back door. And that's exactly what we did. We arm wrestled them to the ground, and we signed an arrangement agreement, and we're going to close this thing by the end of June. So there's companies out there that have really good assets. They have no money. They have management teams that are entrenched. They don't want to, you know, walk away. But, you know, if, if there's quality assets out there and we can get them for a good price, we're going to go out there and do it. Share structure, take a look at that. We got cash, good shareholder base, First Majestic Silver, Haywood's in there, Sprott. And again, people, Keith Newmeyer, you know, he's, he's very hands-on. This is his baby. This is his third company. He did First Majestic, First Quantum. This is the last one. So if you want to, you know, ride the Keith Newmeyer train, uh, this is the last one that's going out of the station. Uh, Chris Osterman, considerable experience. Uh, he's kind of an unusual background. He's an engineer and a geologist. He was actually an engineer before a geologist, so it's a little bit, little, I found that a little bit strange, but uh, he's a really strong explorationist. 
myself, I'm a geologist and, and I was a former uh, a cell site analyst, don't hold that against me, and uh, I've worked all over the world. And then here's the rest of our team. Uh, we're supported by First Majestic Silver, our board, our management are mostly uh, First Majestic people. Eight, currently we have 18, port, uh, 18 assets, 17 in Mexico, one in the United States, all have mineralization, good land packages, and all have huge upside for, for uh, mineralization. And here's the map here, just showing the location. We have one asset in, in Nevada as well. So how we're going to create value, we're going to hold on to these assets, and then we'll get, enter into, uh, when things turn around in these markets and things get better, we will talk to third parties, and, and, and they will move the asset forward, but we'll hold on to residual uh, interest through any one of these uh, ways, uh, royalty, streams, earnings, minority interests. So there you have it, you know, we're assisted by First Majestic Silver, I'm in their office, we have a services agreement, 18 assets, we'll use our cash and shares to buy assets, mostly shares, and uh, when things turn around these markets, which they will, we'll have 40, 50 assets, we'll be doing deals, and we'll be making a lot of money for our shareholders. Thank you for your time.